Our control system is comprised of three subsystems. The hub, the power center, and each individual sensor, which has its own microcontroller. Power enters the system through the power center at 120 volts and is converted with a 5 amp, 5 volt DC power supply, which controls the hub's micro, or see the power center's microcontroller, as well as sends 5 volts to the hub. The hub is a custom printed PCB with a Teensy ARM processor, which communicates with up to eight sensors individually which can be inserted even after programming into any port. It also sends data back to the power center via another Ethernet cable. The power center has eight individually controlled outlets, which are controlled by its own microcontroller and eight AC relays. This allows us the advantage of having all of our high voltage power enclosed in one central box and then only five volts that goes to the hub and to the sensors. The hub controls the outlets based on three different parameters. Individual status of the sensors, the status of other outlets, or based on time, and also a combination of all three. One of the unique characteristics of our system is that each sensor has its own microcontroller. This allows us to use an array of sensors, all with different data types, all with different communication protocols, to communicate with its own microcontroller and then allows us to format that data to send to the hub for its control of the outlets. This is senior project group number one with our adaptive environmental regulation control system as it's applied to an aquaponics setup. Here we have our 55 gallon fish tank where we have our 10 goldfish which produce waste that it is pumped to the grow bed where the plants clean the water and it's returned to the fish. As required in our Apple One, we have to be able to regulate and maintain a temperature of our environmental system. We do that in two different ways. We have a temperature sensor which measures the temperature of the water and a combination temperature humidity sensor which measures the ambient air as well as uh, temperature and humidity. Some fish require a very specific temperature regulation. In this case, we'll demonstrate that by our temperature sensor being in water that's colder than our fish tank uh, ambient conditions. And this light simulates that the heater is on, attempting to uh, warm the water. When we put our temperature sensor into the uh, warmer water, as the temperature rises, the control system will note that, and when it reaches the appropriate set point, we'll turn off the heater. For this demonstration, we'll also show the use of a float position sensor to protect the motor and to ensure that the fish are getting the appropriate uh, filtration. If the water level gets below a certain point, potential damage to the filter could occur if the filter runs dry. As the water level begins to decrease through evaporation, the float will lower and reach the set point, at which it will turn off the filter to protect the pump, but then start the biological filter to water the plants as well as uh, filter the water. For this demonstration, we'll also show how using a photodiode to monitor the ambient light conditions will control whether or not the grow light is turned on. In this case, the lights are, uh, the ambient lights are on, the grow light is off, and if the ambient light turns off, the grow light will automatically come on. One of the primary Alpha 2 requirements is to log, store, and graph the data that the sensors collect. This is done through the hub collecting the data and sending that data to the Raspberry Pi, which has the processing power to graph it.